The specs are amazing, the build quality is right up there, plus the brand and model have genuine history and heritage in this industry. But here's the thing, is it too expensive? Welcome back to the channel, all you watch here as a nerds. And today, well, we are going to take a look at this, the Vertex M36, a reproduction of the Dirty Dozen watches by a brand that were actually there during that time. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'll keep it short here, as you can find a gazillion videos about this online. Vertex were part of 12 watches issued to the Allied forces during World War II, all of which had the same design in order to meet military specifications. These 12 watches were called affectionately the Dirty Dozen by enthusiasts. And if you want more info on that, let me know, because I could do a history video on this, like I used to do way, way Way, way back when. But here's the thing, as I said before, the watch is really well built. It's a faithful recreation with modern day specifications and it looks well magnificent on my seven and a half incher of a wrist. But is it too expensive? Maybe a little too expensive for me? Well, I'll talk about that in a little bit. I'm going to get started here on the specs, so it's time for us to find out if we have a winner or if it's a binner. All right, you gorgeous bunch of watch nerds. On this watch, we have a 36 mil case diameter, 47 mil lug to lug, 11 mil thickness and 18 mil lug width. It has double domed sapphire crystal, decent loom, screw down crown with 100 meters of water resistance. And it also comes as standard with some pretty nice screwed in lugs with an expandable metal strap, sand slash khaki style double pass nylon strap and a leather double pass strap as well. Finally, this watch is powered by the Solita SW260-1 small second hand movement. It has 31 joules, hacks and hand winds, is a 4 hertz movement and beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour for her pleasure. Now, this is the Elaboré movement and is described on the Vertex website as adorned with blue screws, custom detailing and of course a custom vertex rotor weight or counterweight but unfortunately you just can't see it you have a solid case back with a printed serial number on the back hmm so boy oh boy do i have thoughts on this 1944 vertex cal 59 reissue firstly and you can't deny it the build quality is well fantastic from the applied markers to the vertex logo and the british mod arrow everything on this watch feels thought out and perfectly executed the smaller 36 mil also helps with the design and space it maximizes the practicality and reduces dead space but it does it without making this watch feel overcrowded or overstuffed and that's pretty cool i'm a big fan of the applied arabics and the train track minute hand with circular indices and the rectangle 12 is lovely and phallic jokes aside and believe me i've done a good job controlling it here it could have dropped the two smaller circles at the 12 in my opinion. I mean, come on boys, I have the mind of a 10 year old and I found it hilarious. Oh well. Finally, a five year warranty is fantastic and in line with the likes of Citizen, Tudor, Christopher Ward and the other big boys. So again, you know, bravo. But penis drawings aside, what are my cripes with this watch? Well, just three really. Firstly, the straps you get on this watch wouldn't be my personal choice. I've actually been wearing this on a ribbed for my pleasure nylon double pass strap that has been perfect on this watch. The other straps, to be fully honest with you, I feel are really well made. The bracelet, I'm just not a fan of style wise. And I just feel the nylon strap and the leather strap are good, but they're not quite as good as the strap that I've been wearing it on. Next. We need to know that Vertex have spared no expense to make this movement the best finished one that they could ever have done. So why hide it behind a sterile case back? Now maybe a sapphire displaced case back showing a custom rotor and finishing wouldn't have been better on this occasion. I feel that it would have been. I know it's a tool watch but why put so much effort into the finishing of the movement and tell us about it if you're just not going to show it off? 
I don't know, maybe that is just me. And finally, this watch costs an eye-watering £2,150, including VAT. That is a mental price. Now, don't get me wrong here, this watch is really, really well made. And yes, we have all spent more money on luxury brands, but that's kind of my point here. It's easy to drop that much money on an Amiga or Tudor if you have the money to, because you're not just buying a brand, you're buying an ideal. And I have tremendous respect for the Dirty Dozen watches and the importance of these watches as a brand, but it doesn't evoke the same emotion. You know what I mean? It doesn't evoke the same emotion as the Omega, Tudor and Rolexes would if you put that on your wrist. And that kind of comes with that price tag in my opinion. Again, I might be wrong. I don't know. For me, I think this watch would be much more of a no-brainer if it cost less than, I don't know, £1,500. I think that the price tag of £2,150 may be just a little bit too high for me, at least on this occasion. But I don't know. What do you think? Look, Overall, this watch is a proper, well-built and historically accurate military tool watch. It has so much going for it and I think if you can justify the price tag, you will be nothing but pleased with this watch. That being said, £2,150 may be a little too rich for my blood, but I may well be in the minority here. So tell me in the comments below, what do you think? Take care watch nerds and I'll see you all in a future video.